Welcome back to the predictions and wishlist series. Today we cover something that is much more speculative, birds. Specifically those that can be accommodated inside aviaries. Currently there is no evidence whatsoever for the existence of aviaries in Planet Zoo and it's looking more and more unlikely that aviaries will make it into the release game. So by all means consider this as more of a DLC prediction and wishlist. With around 10,000 bird species described worldwide, this is another complicated animal group to study, so we will discard many of the non-interesting orders and families that rarely appear in captivity. Furthermore, we will not be going through penguins, wading birds such as storks, cranes and flamingos, or seabirds such as cormorants, albatrosses or petrels. These animals have already been covered in other videos or they are simply not suitable inside an aviary environment. My notable species will be judged mainly on their popularity, exoticness, visual appeal and presence in captivity, with a minor thought towards their conservation status. The ratite group of flightless birds have already been extensively covered in our biome videos. As they are mostly flightless, many would not be considered aviary birds besides the tinamous. These new world birds are the only ratites that can fly, although they do so poorly and prefer to dwell on the ground. Tinamous are reminiscent of their sister group, the Kiwis, relatives during their Gondwana origins. Tinamous are relatively abundant, appearing over most biomes of Central and South America besides the Atacama Desert, but in recent times many of their genera have been downgraded to near-threatened or vulnerable status due to ongoing habitat loss. In zoos they appear readily, with many species represented. Notable varieties include the elegant crested tinamou, by far the most common in captivity. Galliforms, or the wildfowl, are a diverse order of stocky, ground-feeding birds. Domesticated birds such as chickens, turkeys and quail derive from this group, but there are quite a few more exotic variants capable as spectacular aviary specimens. The megapodes are famous for constructing large earthen mounds. They are stocky, mostly ground-dwelling birds distributed across the broader Australasian region. Though many genera restricted to island habitats have become endangered due to habitat loss, hunting for food and introduced predators. Their relative obscurity would perhaps be rendered them an unlikely selection. This family includes the brush turkeys, of which the Australian and wattled varieties are the most famous. The endangered Malio of Sulawesi Island has been recently introduced to the Bronx Zoo. Endangered scrub fowls of the Pacific Islands are also notable. The Curacao family consists of tropical and subtropical birds from Central and South America. Males are usually noted for displaying dark plumage with head crests, but again, this group is quite obscure and unlikely to be represented in the game, though many species are severely threatened. Chachalacas and guans are also part of this family. Considered the oldest family of the galliforms is the African guinea fowl, distributed across most of Sub-Saharan Africa, avoiding the most arid regions. Here they provide a key source of prey for predators and game food for human consumption. They are also very common in zoo captivity and thus may be a possibility. Famous species include the helmeted, crested and vulturine guinea fowl. The pheasant family is diverse, consisting of ancestors to the domestic chicken such as the jungle fowl, all the way to the visually striking pea fowls of which the Indian has already been confirmed for the game. Many colourful varieties are often the prized assets of zoos worldwide, and it's expected that a few of these would be introduced into an aviary bird roster. Some genera have particularly striking iridescent plumage. Satire and Kbot's tragopans are lucrative specimens in captivity due to their attractiveness. Similarly, the Himalayan and Chinese monals. Pheasants and peacock pheasants also represent appealing candidates. The ansari forms or the waterfowl are commonly sighted in lakes, pools or other aquatic habitats in scenery at zoos, not necessarily inside aviaries because many are migratory birds. Besides some endangered or exquisite varieties, they are considered more as local or naturally occurring birds. We've covered swans extensively already and they are likely to be added as they are found worldwide and present naturally at many zoos nature parks and wildlife preserves. Geese are probably too unpopular and abundant to feature. Again, ducks are commonplace in captivity and pretty much expected. There are too many species here to consider, but notable examples would include mallards, pockards, and the threatened New Zealand blue duck. 
The Eiders or Sea Ducks, in my opinion, represent better options because of their more ornate appearances. But since they live out in open water, they are problematic and thus unlikely when considered for a zoo game. The Apodiformes order consists of Swifts, Tree Swifts and Hummingbirds. However, Swifts and Tree Swifts are almost completely absent from captivity due to their migratory nature and requirement for large flying space. Hummingbirds, on the other hand, are one of the most popular zoological attractions due to their exquisite visual appeal, vocalizations, and feeding interactions with flowering plants, thus have high expectations to be represented as aviary birds. Hummingbirds are among the smallest birds in the world and are exclusive to the new world. There are more than 300 species of hummingbirds described with a multitude kept in captivity. The next group is the Column Aves clade, consisting of pigeons, cuckoos and related families. The Turacos are by far the most popular attractions in birdhouses and aviary stemming from this group. Compared to the rest, Turacos are unusually colourful. Their limited wild range in tropical Africa means they are considered an exotic export to western zoos and thus likely to grace the game. Pigeons and doves of the Columbidae family are hardy and adaptable birds that fare well in captivity and thus are often preferred aviary exhibitions despite being dramatically less appealing than other birds. Furthermore, the presence of the rock pigeon in urban areas worldwide reduces the overall appeal of this group. Despite this, there are some ornately decorated members of this family that represent likely additions, including the Nicobar and Victoria Crown Pigeon. This family is arguably the least interesting birds of this group, but surprisingly have some representation in captivity. Some notably attractive specimens include the Crested Kua, the Chestnut Breasted Malcoha, and the Asian Emerald Cuckoo, but otherwise they are unlikely candidates. The Raptors or Birds of Prey are famous avian species noted for their hypercarnivorous behavior, often consuming vertebrates much larger than themselves. Many are active hunters and use agile speed and sharp beaks and talons to grasp prey. In recent history, their popularity in zoos has increased due to their perception as intelligent birds and breakthroughs in their own enrichment. Today, almost all raptor genera are represented in captivity. This group is currently under debate as recent genetic studies may indicate their placement as a sister order to the rest of the Acupitriformes. In any case, new world vultures differ from old world vultures due to their exclusive use of smell to find carrion. Californian and Andean condors have already been covered in other biome videos, whilst the turkey and king vulture represent other notable varieties, although the possibility of this family being represented is pretty low. Alternatively, Old World vultures find carrion exclusively by sight. Perhaps alarmingly, besides the Eurasian griffin, all other Old World vulture varieties are threatened with many critically endangered. At the same time, this has resulted in captive breeding programs which have exposed a great number to the public in zoos. A steadying rise in popularity would garner greater likeliness for addition. Four subfamilies in this order are called eagles the true eagles, snake or serpent eagles, sea eagles and harpy eagles. Eagles have plenty of captive representation where they form a strong part of falconry shows in zoos worldwide. Several have been covered in our videos already, such as the bold harpy and Philippine eagle. As one of the most iconic birds of prey, it is almost conclusive to expect eagles of any sort in an Avery edition. Some other notable but perhaps unlikely miscellaneous raptors in this order include the Pacific Bazaar and European Honey Buzzards of the Perninae subfamily, the Shikra and Grey Goshawk of the Acipitridae family, or the Red-tailed Hawk and Osprey. The Secretary Bird is also part of this order, but its mostly terrestrial nature is perhaps more suited as an open enclosure animal in a non-bird exclusive DLC. The Strigiformes consist of the two family of owls. Like raptors, they are hypercarnivorous, iconic and readily available in captivity. True or typical owls of the Strigidae family consist of the majority of all owls, some 220 species. Owls are nocturnal by nature and thus spend most of the day roosting. As a result, they may be perceived to be more boring as a display bird. 
The Snowy Owl and its distinct pure white plumage offers a likely candidate. Likewise, the recognizable feather tufts of the Great Horned Owl and Eurasian Eagle Owl makes these large specimens attractive. Barn Owls are even more distinctive for their masked, heart-shaped faces. As a result, iconic species such as the Western Barn Owl, American Barn Owl and Australian Mask Owl are also likely to be considered for the game. Although not closely related to the raptors, the falconiforms are considered secondary birds of prey as they are fast and carnivorous. They have quite healthy representation in zoos, especially as falconry show animals. Caracaras are much larger than relatives in this order and perhaps appeal greatly to raptor enthusiasts due to their resemblance to eagles. Despite this sentiment, caracaras are slow flyers and instead are often scavengers rather than active hunters. Caracaras are abundant in captivity and would serve as a likely group of birds to grace the roster. Falcons have had a rich history with humans and it is not surprising to see it as one of the most abundant zoo kept animals. Gur falcons and Saker falcons are common in European zoos, whilst the prairie falcon is common in North American zoos. The most famous falcon, the peregrine, is found virtually worldwide in captivity. It's probably expected any of these candidates are added due to their prevalence in captivity. This clade is literally named cavity birds, as the majority of these birds build nests inside tree cavities rather than on branches. A more distinctive trait is that birds in this group have unusually large beaks and bills. Many famous large-billed bird families with decent captive representation, such as hornbills, kingfishers, toucans, and woodpeckers pertain to this group. Trogons and Quetzals of the Trogonidae family are noted for their bright plumage colors and broad bills, in which they use to drill out insects and clasp fruit. They make for attractive and exotic specimens, particularly as they come from tropical rainforest regions worldwide, but would be overshadowed by other rainforest birds and fuss only possibilities. The red-headed and orange-breasted trogon are among the most striking trogons, whilst the resplendent quetzal is often cited as one of the most beautiful Central American forest birds. Hoopoes are noted for their elongated beaks used to reach insects. With heavy competition in this clade of birds and the fact that hoopo numbers in captivity are appallingly low, suggest an unlikely chance of inclusion. The interchangeable hoopo species that encompass Africa, Madagascar and Eurasia are famous for their crown of feathers, with the scimitar bill and other notable species. By far the most popular aviary birds in the world, not just in this clade, are the hornbills. Spectacularly extravagant bills resemble the shape of curved horns and are usually colored brightly. Many iconic species such as the great and rhinoceros hornbill form the crux of specimens in aviaries, with a plethora of other species heavily represented. Even the less aesthetically appealing ground hornbills also appear in large numbers in captivity. The hornbills would warrant an expected bird variety. Kingfishers are another dominant and likely family to be represented from this clade. Recognizably stout birds with large pointed bills and striking coloration. They have often been core components of aviary varieties and continue to be extremely well represented in captivity. Australian kookaburras are iconic worldwide for their loud and distinctive calls which add a unique and exotic ambience to aviary settings. Close relatives of the kingfishers are the bee eaters. Often smaller in size, they feature alternating bands of bright colouring which gives visual illusions of rainbow-like or wide spectrum, almost iridescent coloration. A favourite among bird enthusiasts, although less conspicuous compared to the more famous kingfishers, carmine bee eaters and European bee eaters are especially common in zoos. Other kingfisher relatives in this order include the rollers, toadies and motmots. Although many are colourful specimens in their own right, ultimately they compete with kingfishers and bee eaters, thus they are unlikely to be considered. Like the hornbills, toucans are iconic rainforest birds sporting enormous but colourful bills. Like other members of this clade, they nest in tree hollows and cavities, but usually those dug out by other birds or animals, as their bills are often too weak to use as an excavation tool. Toucans such as the toko and keel build are among the popularly showcased varieties, but even smaller specimens such as the toucanets and aracaris have respectable representation in zoos, serving as another expected aviary bird family. Woodpeckers are famous for their characteristic behavior of boring out tree hollows using their beaks. As they are temperate birds, usually appearing in woodlands, 
prevalent worldwide and are more associated with bird watching and bird feeding, they are considered less exotic as aviary specimens. Correspondingly, they are less represented in captivity and thus less likely to appear in the game. Probably the most anticipated group of aviary birds are the parrots. This enormous group of distinctly vibrant birds with hook bills have been a mainstay not only in zoo aviaries but in the pet trade. Their unique appearances, loud calls and charismatic intelligent nature tends to bolster the character of accompanying bird exhibits and prove to be valuable assets for zoos. Hailing from rainforests of the Caribbean, Central America and South America, neotropical parrots are often the first of this order that come to mind when the public thinks of exotic parrots. Iconic Amazonian specimens such as the sun parakeet and yellow-headed Amazons are lucrative species especially since many of these are now endangered due to ongoing habitat loss in the region. Macaws are distinct from other parrots for their greater sizes, longer tails and bare face patches. Unfortunately, their wild status is often more critical and isolated compared to other neotropical parrot varieties, but in captivity they often flourish, with every zoo keeping several different varieties of macaws. Core mainstays such as the scarlet, blue and yellow, and hyacinth macaws are surefire expectations in any aviary edition. Spix's macaw is possibly extinct in the wild, and thus is only maintained through captive breeding programs. Lorries are smaller parrots restricted to Oceania and some islands of Southeast Asia. A selection of lorries, lorikeets and fig parrots make up some more iconic parrot specimens that have been introduced to zoos worldwide. The rainbow lorikeet is arguably the most famous parrot to come out of Australia, whilst the budgerigar is a popular pet animal. It's likely to see some of these in an Avery DLC. Cockatoos are an iconic Australasian parrot family. Although undeniably less colourful than their counterparts, they are famous for adorning striking head crests and are often larger than most rainforest dwelling parrots and lorries. Many species are prominent additions in Australian and Southeast Asian zoos and have been introduced globally in recent years, particularly the Galar, Sulphur Crested and Major Mitchell's Cockatoo. Like budgerigars, these small cockatiels are also a favourite among pet birds. Some other possible parrots include the widely kept fishes and masked lovebirds, hanging parrots, king parrots, and the pesquets parrot. Our final group in this diverse order are the New Zealand parrots. They are distinct birds that have evolved separately from the rest of the parrot order due to isolation. Importantly, all species are endangered, with the iconic kakapo restricted to a single island. The kakapo is a flightless giant ground parrot, a result of insular gigantism, whilst the kia is the world's only alpine adapted parrot. These birds are not known to be in captivity outside New Zealand and thus ultimately unlikely but worth a mention. By far the most extensive group of birds are the passerines or perching birds, which constitute more than half of all bird species. Their main defining feature is the arrangement of their toes, which facilitates perching. For the most part, passerines are universally well represented in captivity, but with too many species to analyse, we will only be focusing on key varieties that are popular as exotic specimens. These two families derive from the Tyranny suborder of birds known as subossines, New World tropical birds that have different musculature in their syrinx and thus are not true songbirds. There are a few genera here that are considered possible exotic specimens with some captive representation, such as the cock of the rocks and umbrella birds. The Arareep mannequin is a critically endangered bird that has been personally championed by Sir David Attenborough in an attempt to save the species. These birds live in an ecological region unique to Australia and the island of New Guinea. The lyrebird is Australia's most famous passerine bird, the ability to mimic sounds and the extravagant long tails have solidified it as a cultural icon. Both lyrebirds and bowerbirds are famed for their intricate courtship displays, of which the latter has been extensively showcased in documentaries. The birds of paradise are possibly the most lucrative aviary specimens due to their rarity in captivity and remote distributions in dense rainforest regions of Australasia. Known for the male's elaborate plumage consisting of vivid colours and elongated feathers, the birds of paradise are one of the likelier groups to be considered. With so many unique standout choices, it is expected that one or two of these are selected. 
Some notable species include the greater, ragiana, and superb birds of paradise, the magnificent rifle bird and the princess Stephanie's astrapia. Corvids are remarkable for their intelligence, demonstrating self-awareness and tool-making abilities. Adaptable members of this group such as crows and ravens appear worldwide and are kind of needless in a zoo setting, but there are a selection of unique and attractive varieties appropriate for Avery Showcase. These include coloured magpies and the jays. The blue jay and Eurasian jay are a particular favourite amongst North American and European zoos. The sylvids are a diverse superfamily of songbirds consisting of warblers, swallows, larks and martins. Although not as colourful or interesting as other aviary considerations, these birds instead are noted for their sounds that enhance the atmosphere of aviaries. Otherwise, due to their abundant distribution, especially in urban areas, their migratory behaviour and lacklustre appearances, they would be considered unlikely. Our last group we will cover are the finches. Known mostly for their large beaks adapted to eating seeds, Finches are famous for evolving different shaped beaks to occupy different niches and thus occur over almost every conceivable habitat on Earth. As with other songbirds, they are mostly deemed uninteresting for specialised and exotic aviaries, but notable species such as the iconic Gordian finch or elegant euphonia are possibilities. Other birds in related families can also be possibly considered. Of note are the iridescent sunbirds with their long bills that resemble hummingbirds, the cardinals which have decent appearances in North America, the colourful buntings and the Asian fairy bluebird. Finally, some miscellaneous candidates from the entire passerine order that are worth a mention but ultimately unlikely include the Tickles blue flycatcher, bohemian waxwing and various species of robins, starlings and mockingbirds. We end today's video with two birds that are notable by themselves. Firstly, the Huatzin. Although resembling a brightly coloured arboreal game bird, genetic research has indicated that the Huatzin is the last surviving member of a distinct lineage that branched off 64 million years ago. They are thus considered living fossils and are famous resultingly. Their history in zoos has been dire, owing to their inability to adapt well to captivity. No Huatzins are currently exhibited for this reason. Thus, they are probably unlikely candidates but have a slight possibility for their unique taxonomic status. The tawny frogmouth is another iconic bird species deriving from Australia. Part of the order of nightjars, frogmouths are insectivorous animals that are nocturnally active, whilst unusually docile and placid in daytime which allows for human interaction. They have been increasingly exported outside the continent into major locations such as Lincoln Park Zoo, Bronx Zoo and Antwerp Zoo and therefore represents another possibility. That ends our predictions and wishlist video for Avery Birds. Even though I have covered a vast amount of famous and iconic Avery Bird species, there's so many more out there that could theoretically be considered for a possible future DLC. In any case, I would treat these animals with less significance than open enclosure animals, kind of like terrarium or exhibit animals, so if Frontier ultimately decides to create an Avery DLC, I don't think they can really go wrong with their own additions. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed today's content and I will see you later.